major, catastrophic, historic. These are some of the words being used to describe the flooding that happened in Vermont, New York, Pennsylvania, and across parts of the Northeast. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kagas. In this video, we're going to take a look at five reasons why the flooding across parts of the Northeast was so extreme. Before we get into that top five in no particular order, I do want to show you the radar estimates of how much rain actually fell to cause that. Look at that, anywhere from 5 to 10 inches from parts of Pennsylvania into eastern New York. Again, ground zero being parts of Vermont and in New York. Again, anywhere from 5 to 10 inches, some places exceeding a foot there, and a lot of that running right off. And we will talk about some of the reasons for that in just a minute. If you want to stay updated on all things weather, especially as we are in hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. Hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot if you find this content helpful. On to the five reasons why the flooding was so bad into the Northeast. Reason number one, and these are in no particular order, the precipitable water, the amount of moisture in our atmosphere. You see all that green over New England. That is the anomaly of precipitable water, about two inches above where we should be for this time of the year. So as those storms got going, there was more moisture to play with. Now, this is the calling card of climate change. Climate change did not cause these storms to be there, but... They did enhance them by having this an extra moisture. In a warming atmosphere, we hold more moisture, and that was available for these thunderstorms that developed to use and play with. So again, climate change doesn't create the weather, but it's like an enhancer. It's like a steroid for the weather to use, and it's exactly the role that climate change played in this event. There was also, again, meteorological reasons for that. We had a big upper low over the Hudson Bay. That counterclockwise flow was pulling in some of that Atlantic tropical moisture right on into New England, right on into parts of the Northeast. You also see that big blue H towards the center of your screen. We had a big blocking high toward Greenland that kind of blocked the traffic flow there. So we had that persistent conveyor belt of moisture coming right into the Northeast. So as storms developed, there was all of that moisture for those storms to play with. So kind of twofold there. That is reason number two, the upper level pattern was extremely favorable. Number three, we're going to go to the surface. There was a big cold front that sliced right on through western Pennsylvania, western New York. This was the trigger mechanism to help get thunderstorms going that were able to take advantage of the moisture that we just talked about. So as we had that cold front fire up those storms there, notice this upper level flow, this jet stream, this dip in the jet stream was oriented also from south to north, kind of parallel with that cold front. So as the storms fired up right along the leading edge of that front, they moved from south to north. So that was also a conveyor belt. We call that training thunderstorms. As one storm develops and moves to the north, another one triggered up along the front and then also moved from south to, south to north. So we had these storms building off of each other, going over the same places repeatedly, continuing to take advantage of all that moisture, which added to that catastrophe as well. If you are from this area, then you know the next reason already why the flooding was so bad. The topography. This is kind of a zoomed in look. There's a lot of names on the screen here. These are the city names, but look at the topography there. All those little jagged marks are the extreme mountains through parts of Vermont and into eastern New York. For reference, at the top of your screen here is Burlington. There's Middlebury. Of course, if you're a skier, you know Rutland, but all of that terrain allowed and funneled all of that heavy rain that we took a look at earlier in this video to roll right down the mountain into the lower elevations enhancing that flood so we kind of have all of these numbers this is number four now building reason number four anyway building on top of each other allowing for this major flood catastrophe number five this last reason here for why things were so bad, why the flooding was so extreme across parts of the Northeast. It had already been waterlogged. We had already seen above normal precipitation across the Northeast over the last few weeks and into the last month. So the ground was already saturated. When the ground is saturated, it acts like a sponge. It doesn't soak anything up. So we just took a look at the topography as all of this rain was running off the mountains. It was also just not being absorbed by the ground and going into the rivers and going into streets and unfortunately people's homes and allowing all of this catastrophe to happen because the ground just couldn't take it. You see it there, the percent of normal over the last 30 days was about 200% 
And with the rain added from the last few days from the during that major flood event that happened, it was about 250 to 300 percent of normal there. So you see all of these five reasons kind of combined to creating this extreme flight catastrophe across parts of the Northeast. Mentioned this earlier again, but it's important to note that climate change does not cause storms. Those thunderstorms would have been there anyway, triggered by that cold front. The training would have been there. We likely would have seen some flooding in that setup regardless. What climate change did though in this flood event was provide excess amounts of moisture higher than normal for those storms to play with. So while there likely would have been flooding again, that extra moisture in the atmosphere made this situation so much worse. Hey, thank you guys so much for tuning in again. Those were the five reasons why the flooding was so extreme across parts of the Northeast in July of 2023, rivaling Hurricane Irene. Those that live there know exactly what happened and we had damage rivaling that. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. And again, if you want to stay updated on all things weather, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you hit the notification bell, you will be alerted to any time we post new content. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.